But we now go back to Sarah, who's still up in Manchester to take a look at some of the highlights of this year's Tory party conference. Christ, how do you pick? So much to choose from. Highlights. Perhaps she'll pick the housing minister who said, and I quote, not all private renters smoke weed and are bad people in gangs. Essentially, not all bloody poor people who can't afford to buy their own home are crack dealing thugs. Some of them are white. Or the energy secretary doubling down on the lie about Labour putting a tax on eating meat. Or GB News presenter and haunted owl Jacob Rees-Mogg passionately supporting the import of hormone-injected beef from Australia, telling us it's delicious. Another Brexit dividend. Or fellow GB News reporter, the deputy Tory chairman, who in response to HS2 quipped, well, who wants to go to Bradford anyway? Or senior Tories branding anyone who has concerns about digging for more oil and gas as net zero zealots, even though net zero is government policy. Or maybe it was Liz Truss. Uh, telling us all that we need to release all the gas we're sitting on. Or perhaps the fact that Liz Truss was the second most popular Tory there, just behind Nigel Farage, even though he isn't even a Tory, and the only reason he was there is because he's a presenter on GB News, although it sounds to me like the party faithful would like him to be running the party and therefore possibly the country before the decade is out. Fun times. Perhaps she'll pick the business secretary saying that charities criticising the government shouldn't get public funding, saying we should mark our own homework. Or the minister for net zero projectile vomiting lies about 15 minute cities. And if you don't know what 15 minute cities are, don't bother looking it up. They don't exist. But nevertheless, the transport secretary later doubled down on that far right conspiracy, saying what's sinister about 15 minute cities is that local councils can tell you how often you can go to the shops. Well, it would be if it was a thing, which it isn't, and it never has been. Uh, except during Covid. Fine. Or the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom laying all the NHS's woes firmly at the door of hard-working nurses and doctors. Or Jeremy Hunt laying all the country's financial woes firmly at the door of benefit claimants. Or Jeremy Hunt again, the Chancellor of the Exchequer saying halving inflation is the same as a 5p tax cut, which means he either has no idea how the economy works or he's lying through his teeth. Hint. Slowing inflation means prices are still rising, just at a slower rate. And I'm pretty sure you know that, Jeremy, you moronic, lying, millionaire piece. Or, 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 or when the Home Secretary of the United Kingdom said that her multiculturalism has failed comments were mischaracterised before going on to warn that a hurricane of migrants is coming and that the Human Rights Act should be renamed the Criminal Rights Act, proving that her original comments weren't mischaracterised at all. Or when the Party of Free speech threw someone out for quietly muttering dissent at Braverman's unhinged speech, a speech that the Daily Mail called spellbinding. Difficult to pick a favourite when you've had just hordes of government ministers, ministers of the crown, falling over themselves to churn out dangerous far-right conspiracies whilst pulling non-existent policies out their arse and then promising to scrap them even though they never existed. A four-day festival of bullshit dog whistles and scaremongering the like I have not seen in my professional lifetime. And I sat through Brexit. The Prime Minister's speech. No, I didn't, I didn't see it. I had, to, I had to get the train home last night with everyone else. Did, did you see it? No. I don't think anyone saw it. Yep, thank you. Well, just the Labour Party conference to go before things settle back down to normal.